started Bow Life Church in your Saturday and confession line, and who comes in? Adolf Hitler. Okay, I'm just going to show you. See, now he's standing like the Pharisees, pushing his way to get some guy who has no understanding to see whether he can get himself from the curse that he's befalling him. What are you going to do? You will wait. You'll ask questions. You'll see, is he real? Because immediately if that man is real, that's the end for generations. It's sorted out. By forgiving a person's sin in the prayer line, healing for generations can happen. Sickness, disease can be healed in the prayer line. This power has been given to man to forgive sins. But if you retain it, it's retained. If you forgive, it's forgiven. But have you stepped into that role? Guys, you see that, I mean, in a nutshell, there's so much alignment and protection in prayer. Not just prayer, not individuals praying, individuals attaching themselves to the greater body, which is their community, and then praying in line with that. And then the protection comes in, but also it makes you think, what am I losing today that I don't even know of? Yeah? I mean, you're talking about purchase of land. What else am I losing? Am I losing time? Am I losing health? Am I losing money? Am I, what am I losing? Am I losing relationships? And I don't even know that some things are being stolen from me. Right? So these are all in line with what the message is today and in the continuing series okay, on forgiveness. I won't take too much time, but just to refresh you and just to bring you to this point of forgiveness. Um, when we were preaching this, when Kay was preaching this even on Tuesday, so many people were sitting in the audience. And afterwards, you won't believe the number of people that came up to Kay and said, oh, were you talking about me? You know, and they were like, they thought he was, you you know, they thought he was speaking just for them. And, but there were so many people who thought he was speaking just for them, you know, and it was speaking right into the hearts because it is personal. He's not sitting here aiming at a couple of you. He's giving it to all of you. But if it comes into you personally, take it, take it, take it. It's God. Okay. So forgiveness, once again is not only the forgiveness, it, it's twofold here, okay, that we're touching on today. One is, yes, it is the forgiveness, the power that you have to release and to withhold. If you don't understand this power, you are probably withholding in ignorance anyway, okay, to effect, to effect, okay? And also, if you just freely just say, oh, I forgive everybody, I forgive everybody, I forgive everybody, it's not really exercising that power at all. It's because it's your, you think it's your duty. It's like some flimsy, no justice realm that you're living in. And then that bounces back on you, okay? Because there's no, if you're, if you're called to be a priest, and if you're called to dedicate your life, because now it's the order of Melchizedek, you no longer have to be in the Levitical order. Any one of you can choose to come under the order of Melchizedek and give your life for the praying and, in, in, uh, and um, interceding of the church. If you choose to do that, it's available to you freely. Okay, And then you come into that ordination and then you have the ability to forgive and withhold along with the individual. Along with the individual. So for example, I had someone, a lot of people calling me and saying, listen, what do I do? Say you have a husband-wife relationship. Okay, So in a husband-wife relationship, obviously if the wife does wrong to the husband or vice versa, the, hus- the, the partner's forgiveness is important. It's important. So you can't say, yeah, yeah, okay, just, okay, go to a a priest. But in some instances, in some instances, say the person is totally repented and he can't tell his wife. Okay, it'll just, so then he, and he, he just wants to move forward. He's repented and he wants change and it's a mistake. But he goes then to his priest. Now the priest can't just freely, blindly say, okay, I forgive you, I forgive you. The priest is responsible for the wife as well. So the priest can't be like, okay, I forgive your sins because it has to be weighed. It has to be weighed because you're responsible for a community. Okay? And there is justice in this. So then you wait. That's why conscience is so important. Wow. Okay? To be able to see these things clearly, not be blinded. And then you release forgiveness. And it comes in covering, and then they go on to build their lives. 
Okay, that's an example of why you need a priest. Okay, and so then in, in other cases, right, partner and priest and whoever it is, say the partner knows about whatever it is and says, okay, I forgive you. Husband, I forgive you. Okay, but let me attach this forgiveness to something greater, the release of forgiveness, and we go and meet the priest. And the priest stands with the wife and says, we release forgiveness over you. Two or three people release. Okay, and it gets established. So do not underestimate the power of moving with the body, moving with the church, moving with the structure. It is a force to be reckoned with. Okay, so you're standing alone and you can be the most sweetest, righteous person, but it won't, you're, you're standing, why do you think all these huge, massive bodies of churches that were established have so much power? Even with all the injustices and the wrongs they're doing. Because it's moving, there's some kind of underlying purpose. Blood has been shed, there's something that's moving forward with it. You attach yourself to that because righteousness will be realized somewhere down the line for them. But you just attach yourself to the body and then with the priest who is over your life, it has more force in either withholding or releasing. Okay? Withholding or releasing. So on that note, everyone's like, okay. Right? On that note, join me in welcoming Kay with the Sunday word. Come on. Thank you. Jesus is awesome. Welcome to your Sunday morning message. This is Wildlife Church. Listen carefully. Okay, this message is your communion message. We've got a table ready. We've got the blood and the body of Christ waiting for you to partake of. This is your inheritance. There's a reason why this is a communion service. If you come today, you come to the most special, special, special service. The most special sacrament that you can ever come for. This service should never be missed. Never. It saves your life. It saves your life, literally. Today, your life will be saved. Today, many of your lives will be saved. Today, many of your, not only your lives, your health will be saved. Many of your businesses will be saved. Many of your jobs will be saved. Many situations are about to be saved today just because you're going to understand that table. Okay? That's why this was a part of the sacramental duties of the church. This is an important aspect of being a Christian, a believer. It is an important aspect of being able to understand forgiveness. And we are going to this table at the end of this message. But first... I'm going to teach on it. Are you ready? Okay. So, what Raj and Vero did not tell you, and I hope uh, I have permission. Uh, okay. They smile, so maybe they don't know what I'm saying, but I think I get permission. Okay. But um, is that uh, a couple of days prior to that, uh, Raj sat with uh, people in the church, people who are friends of his, partners of his, and they released forgiveness upon each other. This is very important to be said. Okay. Work, I think. People, business people. Uh, are you working with someone? Is your company crashing? Uh, do you not have success in what you do? Are you a partner of somebody? And uh, you're realizing that things are not going so well, uh, that you're constantly having different issues in your work and your business. Are you married to somebody that you need to be able to live in their grace, their mercy, and their forgiveness? Are you a, p- a part of a family that doesn't understand these things, and you're seeing constantly that there is sickness, disease, and all kinds of things that ail and come to block you from moving forward. These are questions that you need to ask. These are answers you might have today when you hear this word. You'll understand the value of when we talk of forgiveness. People don't get it, but I'm just going to explain the simple thing that Fiona explained about husband and wife um, in the beginning and uh, uh, said uh, uh, someone can be... uh, 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 a wife can be uh, cheating on her husband, doing something wrong. I'm just giving an example, okay? And the wife comes to us and explains the story, okay? And says, or, the, or, or likewise, please understand, I'm not uh, uh, giving in to one, uh, one or the other, okay? It can happen both ways. But they come to us and they ask us, you know, then they tell us the story. And this is the second time or third time that this has happened. Uh, and uh, the Grace Church where people don't understand, and this, is, this happens a lot in the Pentecostal charismatic camp, you don't understand, in the sacrament of forgiveness. Forgiveness is a power. Okay? And they explain to us 
what has been going on. Now, if I just simply say, but Jesus has forgiven you, darling. Okay, you're forgiven. Please go back. Okay, do you think that's fair? Okay, do you think that's fair? Um, don't you think I should ask a few questions? Okay, don't you think I should ask, okay, is this over now? Is it, are you going to end this now? Uh, are you going to stand in righteousness now? Are you going to live a life that is set apart and covenanted again? Will you hold on to your word again? Don't you think those are the right, fair questions to ask? Yes. It's unfair for me to just say, oh, it's okay, we forgive you. It's unfair. It's, it's not accountable. It's wrong. It's, it's, it is not an ordained priestly uh, work. It's someone who doesn't know to measure. You see, and so the, the, uh, the, the churches in the earlier, uh, the, the, uh, let me put it like, in, in the olden days and even in the modern days, they understood this. And so this is where superregation comes in. You must understand where this doctrine comes from. So what happens is, because there were very rich people who will become priests and bishops and stuff like that, and, and people who'd come like this to the, the pastor, and so what he would do at that point of time, and this is where this all went wrong, was when they say, well, you know, I'm, uh, the wife would come and say, well, I'm cheating on my husband, and Father, will you uh, forgive me? He will now tell her this. He might say, okay? He might say, and this is where it goes wrong. He'll say, you know what? Or the husband, mostly the husband probably cheating on the wife. That's what happens most of the time, okay? <laughs> and, and then uh, uh, he comes to the pastor, and the pastor says, you know, uh, uh, brother, uh, I, I'll forgive you your sin, uh, because that's my sacramental duty to do that. That's why you're here. But you know what? Uh, the west wing of the church is not still uh, finished. You can see that I've been trying to finish it for the last five years. Why don't you just make sure that you give a donation and then uh, yeah, I'll sort this problem out. Huh? Hmm? Okay? This is what happened to the church. So they built big houses and big buildings. And people got into heaven on unrighteous scales. Jesus Christ looks at the Pharisees waiting to be baptized. And says it like this, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence. And the violent come to take it by force. And he said, these brood of hypocritical wipers, they stand at the edge of the show of John the Baptist while he's baptizing. And they think they can walk in here and force themselves and get baptized and enter into heaven. You say, while they still hold on to all their iniquities and no one ever points out their issues. Do you see that? When you're a leader, you're able to call a spade a spade. When you're a leader, you're able to be able to say, yeah, well, that's wrong. I don't agree with you. You need to fix that. That's what leaders do. That's, what people, that's why people need pastors and leaders. And yes, I do agree that the New Testament says that you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. He says, now you are the royal priesthood. A person who did not obtain mercy, but now you are the royal priesthood. Yes, the Bible talks about you being a royal priesthood, but have you stepped into that role? A role who knows to measure. A role who knows what righteousness is. A role who understands who is not some, uh, some person who just wavers. And, and when, when, things, when you see things wrong, that you're just about, you're about like, ah, oh, don't worry, there's all grace. I'm a grace preacher. Yeah. Yeah. I preach grace. But for me, something wrong is wrong. You see, and I will point it out, and you know me, if you're sitting in this congregation. At no point of time, ah, oh, that's okay. I think that's wrong. You've got to change your ways. And I'll be praying for you till you do. I, the, the priest intercedes for your transgressions. Yes. There's someone needs to pray for you for your transgressions. The priest intercedes for your transgressions. When you take a role of a, if you say you're a mystic on a hill and you say you're a royal priest, so then do you intercede? Do you live? The Bible says that the Melchizedek priest lives to intercede for the transgressions of the people. That means the one job of the priest is to intercede for the transgressions of the people because there is a power in forgiveness. Forgiveness, my friends, is a power. Yeah, yeah. Don't think that is. Uh, don't don't think. Oh my God, God forgives me, so I can just oh, hold on. God has forgiven you. That's why He sent His only begotten Son. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Yes, that is biblical. But has your wife forgiven you? Has your husband forgiven you? Has your employer forgiven you? Hmm? Has the person you sacked forgiven you? Unfairly. I'm asking those questions. Because those matter. Why are we sick? Why are we having problems? That is why you need a church. That is why you need a priest. That is why you need two or three people to come and agree. That's why you need to come and say, brother, I want you to understand that, you know, during COVID time, I had no choice. My my company was suffering. So because of that, I let go of 50 people. Today, they curse you every day. Do you think that that's okay? Do you think that doesn't affect you? You need a priest, my friend. You need a church, my friend. 
You can't go to all 50 of them. You had to let them go. Some people, some people lost their jobs. Their sons committed suicide. Huh? Okay? Today they say, oh, it's because you know, they lost, I lost my job. There are people who, 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 uh, who do all kinds of things. Do you think, uh, uh, you, you think when, when you got that business and you made a success of yourself and you knocked your competition uh, out and then he lost everything, he lost his house, he lost his family, his wife divorced him? You think, you think that, that he thinks of you fondly? Or does he say, remember a day? And he says, hey, what happened to your brother? I remember the day when this happened. I have friends recently, they've taken the vaccine, you see, and they've got very sick after taking the vaccine. Okay. There are people who got sick. Okay. Do you think that they don't remember? What happened? And said, you know, after this day, you know, I can't believe people in the medical industry are irresponsible. They don't look. Do you think doctors who operate on tables and when people die, how many people leave their children, their mothers, their fathers dead? You think they remember those days fondly? They remember those doctors' hands fondly? You think that that person is free? I'm asking you questions. These are deep questions. So when those offenses, those bitternesses are in people's hearts, that doctor one day is walking around, the politician one day is walking around. Hmm? Something happens to his children, to his family. When those hundred people that you release without paying their bonuses, do you know the Bible says that the wages cry out, the unpaid wages of your people cry out to God. <laughs> that he hears it. Do you know that he says it? That when you have not given your bonuses for Christmas? Unjustly. I'm asking you questions. Huh? It says that, your, that the people's voice, when you made profit, Christ is heard by God. You think God is unjust? Hmm? And then when you start going for businesses, you, know, you are realizing that your payments are getting delayed. And you're wondering why your payments are getting delayed. Hmm? And you're delaying their bonuses. But you sow, you reap. That's why there's a stable. That's why there's an ordained priesthood. That's why we are there. So don't ignore this. That's why you need to come to church. That's why you come to someone and say, I know God has forgiven me. Thank God for Jesus Christ that today his blood forgives me. But, but pastor, I have to tell you that you know, this, at this point, you know, I didn't pay my bonuses. Lord, give me the money. Lord, I ask, Lord, give me the money so I can pay, pay those guys back. Lord, bless me. Now, that's a repented heart. Now I can say, brother, I forgive you because I see your heart. And I pray and I bless you that you will prosper. When Zacchaeus took, when Zacchaeus had come and taken money from people, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Jesus walks up to Zacchaeus, just understands supererogation. Okay? And then Zacchaeus comes to Jesus. He finds that Jesus was Lord. What did Jesus say? Jesus says, what did Zacchaeus say? He says, I have taken unjustly from people. I will pay double. That's in the Bible. I will pay double is in the Bible. That's called super irrogation, going beyond. Because Zacchaeus met the Lord, he knew. You might not have the money to pay double from what you've taken, from what you cheated, from what had happened. You might not have the money. But that heart is what's important. I'll tell you one thing, that if you, yes, yes, come on, yeah, you, yeah. If you come to the Lord and you say today, if today you say, I am ready, Lord, bless me so I can pay back my debts. God will bless you, but you, the first bit of money you get. You get what I'm trying to say? It is important that we always try to pay our debts off. Yeah. It, is all, it is so important. I, I mean, me personally, we have debt. Yeah. Of course, anyone who's doing business will have debt. Sure. Okay? But it's important. So Lord, bless me so that I can settle these things fast and sort the problems out. It's a posture of our heart. Yeah. You just get it. It's a posture of our heart. I remember the time living in forgiveness. Living in mercy is one of the most precious, precious, precious things. If there's one thing I can tell you about uh, my life, and uh, you, know, you have sneaky feelings why God likes you, right? Okay, do you have sneaky feelings why God likes you? Personally, you have a relationship with God, right? Yeah. Have you ever asked why does he like me? I, I know why my wife likes me. Okay, so I have a sneaky feeling why God likes me. Okay, okay, and I, I, in my relationship with him, I, I tell him this. I said, you like me. You know why you like me? Because of the fear of God. Because of the fear of God. Because I have the fear of God on me. I mean, believe me, even, the, even my maid at home, 
I don't want her leaving unhappy. Not because I'm, uh, busy, uh, I don't kiss people's butts, huh? I'm Kirby D. Roll. okay? But it is so important to me that she leaves my house knowing that I'm a man of God. You understand that? I don't make you exploit, boss people around. Once, once I was like that. You see, I'm so scared when my parents sometimes come home. Because they're, the classical generation, honestly, they don't know sometimes the way they... Because my, my people are not used to it. My, my people are used to being a son in the house, even if you work there. So sometimes when people don't come and then they get bossed around, I'm worried, like, oh, man, I don't want them to get hurt. You see? Because, you see, we are made in the image of God, and so there's a fear of God. We are made in the image of God, so how we treat people is so, so important. No, I don't want them to feel, leave, feel offended and leave. I'm a man of God to whom much is required, to whom much is given, much is required, much, much. If you want to be raised up, you want to be rich, to whom much is given, much is required, much is required, much. This is not cheap. This is the gospel, my friend. It cost him his life. You see, and if you love him, you want to live for him. And so much is required. And so we pay that cost again and again and again and again. And today we'll pay the cost again because he paid it. And therefore we don't have to resist like him. But we will go to that table and we'll say, God, you know, we are looking at our hearts. You have forgiven us. That's why you've given us this table. You've given us a table because you've forgiven us. But, Lord, today I remember men. And I stand before you and ask, Lord, put it in their hearts. I go to a priest and say, you know, please release your forgiveness. Let's agree together that we are forgiven. Hmm? Isn't, it, isn't it cool? Isn't it good? Yeah? See, the problem with the church, I'll, I'll show it again to you in John 20. Uh, go into John 20. Go, go into John 20. 20. Here it is. Here we are. Verse 21. What does it say here? Okay, so here we are. So Jesus said to them, now this is what you call a great commission, okay? Okay, if you're a believer, this is what you were commissioned with. Commissioned with means this is your calling. This is your ordination. This is, I'm a believer, and we say, oh, we're all royal priesthood now. Okay, yes, do I agree that they, we are not come on a Levitical order? I agree that everyone has been given this power. What is the power? So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Come on, say, I'm sent as Jesus. As Jesus. <laughs> There's nothing wrong in that. As the Father sent me, I, se I send you. That means each one of you have been sent as the Father sent. That means he was sent as a priest. <laughs> am I correct? So as he is, so am I on the world. Is that true? Okay? And when he had said this, he breathed on them. So now this is why you have the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, why do you need the power of the Holy Spirit? This is why. And he breathed on them and he said this. And said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Now watch why you need the Holy Spirit. Generationally, this sorts the problem out. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. Is it there? Come on. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Wow, what power God has given man. This is not some... Some uh, new age, love all, forgive all gospel. <laughs> this is Jesus 101. Okay? You have now given the power to forgive and retain sin because he wants a righteous man on the earth who will weigh the scales. Okay? Adolf Hitler comes to you in your confession line. Your, you've started Bow Life Church in your Saturday confession line, and who comes in? Adolf Hitler. Okay, I'm just trying to show you. Okay, now he's standing in a line, and you know Adolf Hitler is standing in a line, and so you've heard some greasy grace gospel. Okay, and Adolf Hitler comes and says, because he, now he's standing like the Pharisees, pushing his way to get some guy who has no, who, no understanding to see whether he can get himself from the curse that is befalling him. What are you going to do? I'm asking you the question. Huh? I'm asking you the question. What are you going to do? Okay? You will wait. You'll ask questions. You'll see. You'll see, is this guy real? Is he real? Because I, 
I have the power to hold or release. Come on. Did you just get it? You can save the world at the confession line. Did you just get it? You could have saved the world at the confession line. But you don't think of it like that. And especially Pentecostal charismatic, don't think of it like that. And you must understand that I was brought up in grace, Prophet Kobus Van Regber, Neil Obesaker, two of my predecessors. You understand that? They never thought this. I argued with them about this. You see? And I said, I agree completely that there is grace. God is forgiven. Yes, I, I agree. I'm grace. But the sacrament of being able to forgive is a powerful thing. So when I teach, when you teach people in, the, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a grace, now Neil didn't preach greasy grace because I'm going to teach you something else he taught me, which we're going to get to, that's why I'm teaching this, okay? But, but they didn't go down this road because for them, oh, you know what, God has forgiven, now let's not talk about it. And that's what grace preaches. But I would always say, no, but Pastor Neil, when I go to God, I just say, forgive my sin. And strangely, I couldn't help it. If I see someone else sin, I say, forgive my sin. And that's when I knew there's something very mysterious. When I see an accident, I'm suddenly praying, interceding. Naturally, it comes, and I'm talking. And then in that prayer, I can hear the interpretation. Oh, Lord, forgive our sins, forgive our sins, forgive our sins. This is how I knew this thing to be real. Then I see news, I'm watching news, I'm flicking news, and then suddenly, ooh, it's coming like this again, I'm talking, and then I can hear my interpretation of tongues. Oh God, forgive my sin. I'm praying, forgive my sin, forgive my sin. Someone else has sin. That's how it is, this is how I knew there's something not right. And then I said, I, I go and say, no, 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 but, but it's, we've sinned. And then I realize I'm interceding for the sins of the others. You see? The priest will intercede for the other person's sin. God has forgiven, but he's given that right now to you. In the prayer line, you can save the world. By forgiving a person's sin, you can stop destruction. Immediately, if the man is real, that's the end for generations. It's sorted out. In the prayer line, today, at, at, in this prayer line, healing for generations can happen. Sickness, disease can be healed in the prayer line. Come on. Did you just get it? This power has been given to man to forgive sins. But if you retain it, it's retained. If you forgive, it's forgiven. Do you want to be a priest? You are a royal priesthood. You're called for that in your family. Okay? Look at, look at, um, look at uh, uh, Luke 5. We'll take it from here. This is so beautiful. Luke 5. And you turn to Luke 5. Today we're going to learn something. Say, I'm going to learn something today. It's going to be powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 5. Luke 5. And here it is. Here's a man who is paralyzed. Luke 5. Brought to Jesus. You know the story. Okay, but we're going to take it from here. In verse 22. They bring the paralyzed man. Remember, he's paralyzed, okay? And he says, I forgive your sin. They ask, what is he thinking? Why is he saying we forgive your sin? Because there is a system for the forgiveness of sin. Now, again, lift up your hands and say, I will understand this. Okay. Previously, if you were in any other religion, or even if you were a Jew, if you want something to work out, you will have to come and give a sacrifice. You will have to bring to the altar a sacrifice. Then, if you were, I think, uh, if you are Indian, you know, you'll have a Brahmin who is of a line of a priest. You can't just suddenly circumvent that line. You've got to be a Brahmin to be a priest. Do you understand that? Or you've got to be, in the Jewish, you've got to be a Levite to be a priest. You have to be a line. It's a birthright to be a priest. Please understand this. this is, you can't just get anyone to do it. That is why what we are teaching is amazing. <laughs> now, Jesus was not a Brahmin. Jesus was not from the line of a Levite. 
Did you just get it? That's why it's so important what you just saw when he says, okay, now your sins are forgiven. This is very powerful. Now, so they are used to taking the sacrifice to an institution and a temple, meeting the Brahmin, so if you want to call it the Levite, and getting him to forgive the sins. You just get it. Now, but when Jesus perceived what was in their thoughts, he said, why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easy to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise up and walk. So now you want a healing, but the healing has, is entangled with sins. You want your business to prosper, but it's entangled with sins. Your land, suddenly what you're going to sell for 25 million, becomes 36 million. Because it was entangled with forgiveness. And community. What has been robbing your life, your marriage, your, your success, is entangled with receiving forgiveness. Did you just get it? <laughs> when you receive forgiveness, suddenly 25 million becomes 35 million. What you can't, couldn't be healed, now can be healed. Like this paralyzed guy. So he says, but that you may know, say, read this with me, but verse 24, but that you may know, come on, say it with me, but that you may know that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sins. Come on. Not the Levite. Not the Levite. Did you just get it? Not the Brahmin. Not the lineage. Not a temple that, or a, a church or a something else. But you. When I'm talking a temple, I'm talking about the Jewish temple, please. Okay? But you have the power on earth. Who? Man. Wow. To forgive sin. Did you just get it? That is why he demonstrates the healing. So now that you understand that you have the power, but as, like, as much as you have the power, they have the power. Man. He doesn't say only Christians. He says he came to understand, for you to understand that the son of man has the power to forgive sins. So what happens if we are living in a wicked world, a wicked nation, a wicked country, uh, uh, and maybe among wicked people? We are not, but say we are, and they won't forgive you. Does that affect you? Yes, according to him. That's why he, that guy is paralyzed. He's paralyzed because there is no forgiveness of sins. So he says because, of, because man has the power to curse, man also has the power to forgive. So let me show you and demonstrate it. And he forgives his sin. And the man gets up and walks. Did you just get that? Okay. Once you understand this, this is so awesome. So awesome, guys, because then you understand, oh my God, there's a demand for forgiveness. There's a demand. I need to live in forgiveness. I need to live in my wife's forgiveness. I live, need to live in my parents' forgiveness. It was so important to me that I live in my parents' forgiveness. You know, I would not allow one day, they know me well, my parents, okay? Not one day goes by that if I think I've done wrong, something wrong to them, even sh said, shouted at them aloud, said something too, uh, too loud, tone was wrong, that I don't say, I'm sorry, mom and dad. Mom and dad, you'll vouch for that, no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, because it's important to vouch for that. <laughs> okay? That I won't say, I will write to mom, mom, please, sorry, please forgive me. Okay? Not one day do I let go that I don't live in their forgiveness. So precious, man. Oh, what a blessed man I am. It's so precious. See, sure, you'll vouch, right? They before you say, ask for your forgiveness, right? <laughs> you ask her. Very difficult case. <laughs> she probably gets blasted by me more than my mother. Yeah. But if I've gone a bit off and my tone was wrong, I'll sit down and say, Joe, I must seek your forgiveness. I was a bit off. I shouldn't have done it like that. You deserve what you get. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> I was, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very specific. I'm, I was off. I shouldn't have done it like that, you know? You see, and that doesn't mean my advice is bad. My tone could have been off. Why? Because I'm scared of Sisho? Because I'm scared of my mom and dad? The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, my friend. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, my friend. 
the people I've hurt in this country, no one can ever say that I've not gone up to them, the people I've hurt, okay, that I've not gone, I've sent messages, okay, you'll see, I can show on people who will never forgive me and said, please forgive me, I'm sorry. And I don't even deliberately hurt them. They just upset me. Yeah. Because I live in the fear of God. That's a blessing over our lives. That's why people are protected. Because we live in that fear of God. I'm not arrogant to think that I can go away, even if the smallest of us, someone who works for me, I'm not arrogant to think, oh, who cares? I paid a salary. Then we don't need church. Then we don't need pastors. Then we don't need any of this, my friend. There's a blessing to live in the mercy and the forgiveness. It's a humble place. Grace comes for that humble. Grace comes when you come and say, oh, Lord, I make so many mistakes. I'm not one of those prophets who say, oh, I don't make mistakes. Oh, I'm here from God perfectly. My God, they're not like that. They're humble enough to say, you know, we make mistakes. We make mistakes in our ministry. We make mistakes in our lives. We live in the forgiveness of God, but also in the forgiveness of men. Paul says like this, he strives, strives before God and men not to have their hearts offended against him. Do you understand that? That doesn't mean we're scared. We stand in identity. But we also want forgiveness. If we especially have done something wrong. Do you just get it? Now, this demand is beautiful. It keeps you humble. It keeps you at the table. It keeps you in a sacramental life. It keeps you always going there, honoring the table, honoring a day like this, not missing communion ever, always wanting to be in the presence of God, always having the presence of God, my dear friends. Very, I mean, not very rarely. I can't remember the last time I couldn't feel the presence. I couldn't feel the glory of God on my life. My wife could talk the same. But we can't feel, how many of you know the presence of God? We're constantly living in the presence of God. Why? We are constantly in a place of interceding for transgressions, others first, and then the others. You understand that? It's an amazing place to be. It's a powerful place. It's a place where God shows mercy because he sees a humble heart constantly, always esteeming someone greater than you, always thinking that someone else is greater than you, always humbling ourselves before apostles, humbling ourselves before fathers. You see? So important, guys. Such a powerful place of raising up. That's where the raising up comes. There's one thing that the, God, that the Lord says he can't resist. You know, he says he cannot resist a contrite heart. You know, he says that. He said, I will not despise a contrite heart. Okay, so when others accuse me, I go low. I say, oh, Lord, forgive me. I don't know if they're saying it's true. I can't find it. But if there's anything in me, show me, Lord. I'll change it in a moment. He cannot resist a contrite heart. God cannot do. The Bible says there are a few things that he can't resist. Okay, I mean, you understand this. This is gems. He cannot resist a broken and contrite heart. If you go to him and say, God, you know what? Maybe that's what they're saying is true. Maybe these things are true. Lord, show me. Your Holy Spirit, counsel me. Man, I'll tell you, you get raised up and raised up and raised up. And every accusation against someone bringing accusation, God says, don't accuse. This man has repented. I'm scared when people talk about men of God. I'm scared to talk about them. If I talk about them, I know for sure. And I'm talking in the fear of the Lord. I don't, I rarely talk. But if I say something like, if someone, I'm going to now get to what Pastor Neen told me. Huh? I'm going to get to the next. Can you shift gears? Okay. You found a gem. Yeah, big one. Yeah, pink one. Yeah, keep it, keep it, keep it there. Keep it there, yeah. Yeah, miracles will happen. Miracles will happen in your midst. Signs, wonders, gems, gold dust, all that is a normal part of this church, okay? Money multiplication, we are a church of miracles, okay? We're not ashamed of what the Lord does, okay? Watch this. You see, if I say something, you may hear me out, and we've done this for 15 years, when, the, when Pastor Neil ordained me, he ordained me in a very funny way. He ordained me, and then he told Fiona and me something. Now, he's a grace preacher. You must understand... Pastor preached grace in such a powerful way that grace was preached that the system is destroyed. So much so. That means he preaches grace so that everyone feels so empowered. And sometimes we don't have, even when you go up to sit in the front row, our front row seats are taken. That's Pastor Neil's type of grace. 
right? Because people forget who's the pastor in the house. They think they're the pastors. <laughs> okay? So, that's how grace was preached. But people ask the question, can we sin? That's what Paul, how preach, Paul preached grace. People ask the question, can we sin? I ah, so we grace now? Can we go back to uh, sin? They ask the question. That, that's how free they feel. Okay, that's how, that's how much my father preached grace. Okay? Which, uh, and bless him because that's what we needed. Okay? We needed to be so free. Yeah? But I could never bring myself to go down those roads. Because I knew my call. But he told me one thing that always kept me a bit questioning. Okay? And this is what I wanted to bring to you, and I'm going to show you a few cases. Okay, are you ready for this? Yeah. Okay, now this thing becomes serious. Yeah. Okay, then we go to the table, okay? You're going to learn something now. Yeah. Yeah. He told me, Kirby, I'm going to tell you something, but use this very sparingly, and I'm going to show you scriptures that in the New Testament, these scriptures are there. Okay? But he said, Kirby, use this very, very sparingly. Don't ever use this unless you really have to. Okay? And one of these scriptures was 1 Corinthians 5. Okay, and I'll show it to you constantly. Now we're getting into this subject deeper from the next couple of sessions. Okay, I've wanted to preach this for a long time. 1 Corinthians 5. And here it is in 1 Corinthians 5. Beautiful scripture verse. Paul is having a problem with some people. Okay, they're doing certain things at church that is probably very deviant, very wrong, maybe, maybe even very sinful. Okay, 1 Corinthians 5. Watch this. And he says it like this. One Corinthians five. I'm looking for where it is. Is it verse four? Hold on. And he's hands him over. Yes, that's right. Verse four. Verse four. So he said this like a big secret to me. Okay? He said, now I'm going to ordain you. Now these are your rights. But he said, don't use this. If you have to use this, please bring us also into this because this has to be used very sparingly. So this is what it says here. There's a guy who's done something. And this is New Testament, huh? Okay? Now this is a church gathering, a group of community. And this is why we do church. This is why Ecclesia is important. That's why the Bible says two or three people agree in a certain place something can be established. Now do you understand that you have the power to retain? Do you understand that? And the power to forgive. Okay? It's not this old version where you oh, if someone does something wrong against you, just forgive him. Hello, hello. We need to find out what it is. It is. Yes. We have the power to forgive. Yeah. This is done by choice. Yeah. <laughs> this is not just done by thinking that we are weak and we are something, oh, just forgive. This is not a church like that. I need to understand. We will forgive. We want to forgive. But we need to understand. You got it? Okay? There's a wait. So this guy has obviously done something terrible. And Paul says, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ... When you're gathered together, you see, gathered together, say gathered together. Gather. Okay? Along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver. So it's gathered together. Yeah. You see the power. Yeah. This is why the church became the most powerful organization in the world. Yeah. Okay? You gather together. Yeah. And when I say you gather together, I don't need all of you. Okay? We've done this with one or two. Yeah. Two or three. That's all we need. Yeah. Okay? You gather together. When you gather together, you deliver such one to Satan for the destruction of his flesh that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. That means you hand him over to his flesh to do what he wants to do so that he's destroyed and he will repent and maybe he, the only best thing that will happen to him, he'll get to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. That is mature stuff. Yeah. Okay, mature, 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 mature stuff. You're, you're mature enough, right? Yeah. So they understood the power of forgiveness. They understood the power that they could be told. If someone is destroying someone, are you supposed to say we forgive? Or are we supposed to say, hey, two or three, come here. Get together. This thing is happening to so-and-so's life. This person is wrong. We've judged this to be wrong. Come on. Let's stand together. For extreme, divisive, destructive people. Unfortunately, the pastor Neil asked me and said, please, don't use this. Use this very sparingly. He didn't understand the circumstances of my life. And the attacks that came upon my life didn't come upon his life. You understand that? So this has been used to tremendous effect. The power to be told, the power to forgive. Church, you have the power. You have the power. You were called to change the world. You were called to change this nation. Come on. 
this ecclesia, it's government. You are called to change the way things are done. Everything in the world is predicated on sins. It's not something that you just frivolously do and say, I forgive. It's something that you weigh. It's a sacrament. It's sacred. And you agree with people, with community to gather together. And if you do it correctly, if you forgive correctly, generations are forgiven. Curses are broken for generations. If you withhold, generations are not. You have the power. First know it. First know it. Then you can enjoy what church is. Then you can enjoy who a prophet is. You can enjoy who a pastor is. You can enjoy who you are as a leader. You can enjoy who a believer is. You can enjoy when you come to this prayer and you stand with someone wanting to pray for you. What are you doing? You can be gathering together. And you tell them, you know, this has been happening. I want to tell you a story of my boss. He's never given me a promotion for the last seven years. I've worked so hard. Pastor, I'm telling you. Because you, I know you have the... Pastor, I'm telling you because you and I, if we agree today, I know you have the power. Come on. Yes. Church, do you understand the power of this? Yes. So then they pray with you and say, yes, you know what? We declare right now that you'll be promoted. We declare that the injustice will be seen. We expose the fact that this company is doing this to you. We declare that this man will see. If not, we declare that there will be a reckoning. That's your power. You understand that? You have the power to forgive. You have the power to release. You see this guy? Poor fellow. Okay? What could have happened to him? Let me show you. And we close with this. 2 Corinthians 2. This is why we do church, guys. You see, we intercede for people's transgressions. Now, Paul says, and this is a beautiful verse, this is a little nugget, okay? In verse, verse 5, he actually says here that he did this to test them. Test them. Come on, I'm going to stop, stop for a moment. Have you ever heard a doctrine like this? I'm asking you a question. Have you ever heard a doctrine like this before? No. They don't teach you. Why? Because they don't know. All they'll tell you is, if you're a Christian, you're going to come to the table and forgive. They don't tell you the injustices that can happen to people's lives. They don't tell you that you have the power. They don't tell you that God has given you power. This keeps you in the fear of the Lord. It keeps you in being able to understand that, my God, if I come to the table, I need to discern the body. I need to understand the people I've hurt. I need to be able to actually go and say, or even before God, say, oh, God, this area in my life, oh, Lord, forgive me. You see, your discerning it keeps you in holiness. It keeps you in righteousness. It keeps you in forgiveness. And it keeps you wanting blessed. That the enemy can't touch you, can't attack you, can't come against you. It keeps you blessed. You see it? Now, Paul, here's a case study. You saw what he did, right? Okay? Now, part two. Okay? Part two. Paul says, I was just checking my friends whether you all will do what I told you. I was testing you, he says. You see, Paul is now checking his church. He's testing him and saying, I was just checking whether you guys are truly real sons, whether you're actually a part of the ecclesia. Do you understand these things? I was seeing whether you know how to exercise your rights. Do you understand that? And he says it here, and it's so beautiful. So he says, but if anyone has caused grief, now remember he's talking about this guy. Remember? Now, two Corinthians. There was one Corinthians. Two Corinthians. But if anyone has caused grief, he has not grieved me, but he has grieved all of you. Do you see that there? So he says, so if someone hurts a man, you or me, Okay? If he says, he, he, uh, does something to Heishi, he's hurt me, he says. If they've hurt me, he's hurt you. He says, I just did this. Do you understand that? You have the power. I remember when I met Prophet Kobus, Prophet Kobus told me something very beautiful. He said, I went and complained that all the local churches were attacking us at that time. And he said, he's a prophet, right? I'm telling you, he's coming in office. He said, Kirby, you know what? I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to pray that you, God will raise you up. And for all the injustices that are done, for you, done against you, that you will be raised up. And like that. Amen. Amen. But he said, but one thing. I'm going to pray every day continuously for you, Kirby. Okay? That you'll be raised up. And I'll tell you, his prayers were so powerful. I started getting raised up. These guys are attacking. I'm getting raised up. These guys are attacking. I'm getting raised up. Amazing. Yeah. Okay? But he, one day he said, Kirby, when I met him the second or third time, what happened to those guys? Are they still attacking you? Okay? 
And I said, yeah, uh, Prophet, some of them are. Some are. Who are not and who are? He's asking me details. So I said, well, these guys in this domain shall stop, but these guys are. He said, good. I said, why, Prophet? He says, he pointed me into the scripture. He says, you've got to tell me. Because then I'll forgive them as well. Yeah. Then I will also forgive them. He says, because as you tell me, because first you brought them to me in a way where I needed prayer, but after they have forgiven you and they're working together with you, then you tell me because then I will also forgive them so that they will be covered. Come on. This is the power of the church. So a lot of people come and tell me about your husbands and your wives and your family and your friends or your businesses or your partners, but when you all have made friends, I have to, like I told you, pass the Japanese restaurant and look through the window and see you having dinner with them and realize, oh, you made friends, but I'm still praying against them. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't come to the prayer line and tell about your problems and then sort it out because we prayed and it has worked. It works. It works. Because those people will come and repent and say, we are sorry and everything is made up and you're having now dinner with them, but you come to the prayer line with another guy's name. And don't tell us you sorted the problem out. That's what he's saying. But if, if anyone has caused grief, he has not grieved me, but all of you to some extent. Then he says not to be too severe. This punishment which was inflicted by the majority is sufficient for such a man. Did you just see that? What power? He says the majority, when I told you, so and so is saying this, and when I told I don't tell a lot of you, but I tell my leadership, okay? And when I tell you, I'm telling them so that they'll understand and stand with me. Two or three gather together, and they see the injustice. Something will start happening, man. This man will see the injustice, what he's doing. That's why you tell your leaders. That's why you tell someone. And they stand with you, and then he says the punishment, you see that? Which was inflicted by the majority is sufficient for such a man. So that on the contrary, you ought to rather now forgive and comfort him, lest perhaps such one be swallowed up with too much problems. Wow, the power of the church. You see that? He says, when two or three agree, we better forgive him fast. Because I'll tell you, he came to me yesterday, he didn't look good. Okay? He looked like he was very tired, he's not had any sleep. Okay? And I, I don't want this guy to be destroyed. He actually say, came and said he's sorry. So, you know what? Or he told someone else he's sorry. Let's forgive him because we don't want him to be destroyed. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Did you just see there? Yeah. Did you just see there? Okay. He says, guys, when two or three gather together like this today, today, pastors, I want you to come. Okay. Come and stand. We're going to pray for people. Pastors in the prayer line, just come up. We're going to do something new. You see, today, guys, when you come up, I want you to come up and discuss with them, take communion, go to them. And when you go to them, I want you to tell them there are things that you need to talk about and say, you know what, I'm taking communion, I'm going to discern the body today. I want you to understand there's there are too many, there's only two of you all. Can we have some more? Yeah. Yeah. Women and Bawani come up as well. Yeah. Jackie and Ralph, please come up as well. Yeah. 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 This is important. It's communion Sunday. You're going to do communion differently. I want you today, when you take communion, you go to the communion table. But you go to the table discerning the body. Today we're going to have miracles. Today we're going to have breakthrough in your businesses. Today you're going to talk about the injustices in your life that you have done and that others have done to you. And I don't want long confessions. Okay? Simple situations. You don't need to give details. No details. But you can go up to them, you take communion, go and share bread with them. Go and sit and say, hey, you know what? I want to discern that something has been done in my life, that I need forgiveness, but also people have done something to me. I think it's unfair. Can you pray with me that these people will see the light of day? That they will realize what has been done? That they will be able to repent and understand that God is real over my life? Because people laugh at you, man. The Gentiles laugh at you. Do you know the Gentiles laugh at you? The Gentiles laugh at you because they're saying, oh, you guys, these Christians, these guys, they have no God. They walk all over you. And they say, these guys have no God. Come on, I'm just trying to show you. There are things that happen like that to people. Don't you want them to know that your God is real? 
You need to go and say, you know, the, the things that happened to me, they need to see. They need to know that I have a God. Can you pray with me right now? It's so, it's so unfair. But don't forget as you do it, my friend. Seek forgiveness. But the same hand that points one way is pointing three ways. Take the beam off your eye before you point. That's why Pastor Neil said, do this sparingly, son. Because we never know when we are asking for something, the injustices we've done to someone else. So when you come today, first deal with the beam in your eye before we talk about the plank in the others. Is that okay, guys? Okay? And let's do this today because I'm telling you, I'm, this church is going to end up with massive breakthrough. Massive breakthrough because people really understand what forgiveness is about. What the power the church has been given is about. Come on, can we worship God? Yeah? What are we going to do? Yeah, here is love. Yeah. But the, I, I love the, the line in your heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. So don't worry if the music is too loud. It's good because no one can hear what you're saying. <laughs> okay? So just make sure that you tell them. You don't need to give details. Please don't give details. We're not de- doing this. This is not confession chamber. Okay? This is agreement chamber. You're getting someone to agree. Agree for you to see that you're ready to let go but also agreement from them when they see something unjust to you. Two or three gather together, man, today, and we are going to have power. Okay.